Gen 9 Pokemon are finally here. Well, they have been around since Skull and Violent, which were flawed but great games. But Pokemon Radical Red has received a giant update, adding every single Gen 9 Pokemon into Generation 3 gameplay, meaning that there are now over a thousand Pokemon available in your classic Kanto adventure. Does this game offer the penultimate Pokemon experience with arguably the best Pokemon engine ever made? Let's jump right into a hardcore Nuzlocke of this title and face a challenge like no other. Before we get started, let's lay out our ground rules for this hardcore Nuzlocke challenge. All the standard Nuzlocke rules are in effect with the extra two rules applied. No healing items are allowed in battle and no overleveling past the next gym leader's highest level. This game is notoriously difficult for its wide diverse range of Pokemon and extremely hard trainer AI. Let's create our character Sausage, name our rival Eggnog that egg on face jerk and embark on one of the most difficult Nuzlocke challenges ever. When starting out, your mum actually gives you a choice of what region starting you would like, so going with the theme of Gen 9, I'll pick a Paldea Pokemon. Thanks mum. And now we're straight off to Oak's Lab to pick our starter, and I'm gonna go with Fuecoco, and name him Ghost Pep, short for Ghost Pepper. And of course, Eggnog wants some of the smoke, so we're gonna have to take him down. This is our first official battle, but um, uh, looks like he only knows False Swipe, so this is just a gimme, so I'll quickly finish this off. Unbelievable, I picked the wrong Pokemon that only knows a move that can't kill. Oh well. Let's go ahead and collect Oak's package hey, yo. and see what we're going to get for our first Pokemon. And we have Galarian Zigzagoon. This is great. It's a three level Pokemon with Obstagoon in Gen 8. So let's go ahead and catch him and welcome our first Pokemon to the team, Goontar. So let's move straight on to Route 2 and get our second Pokemon and we get Shinx. Oh my god, I love Shinx. Luxray is one of my favorite Pokemon. I'm so excited to catch this and level up and what just happened? I just ran away from the battle. I, I don't understand. I didn't even hit run. Oh my god. That was literally the encounter gone for that route. That's one of my favorite Pokemon. Well, we just have to keep marching to Viridian Forest. So I stop into Viridian City and encounter a Poochiena. Well, that's great. I'll catch him and call him Vegemite. And I'm just going to quickly talk to these NPCs because sometimes they have some useful items. Oh yeah, see, it is amazing there. Let's talk to this guy. Oh, he's got a neat trick for us. Lovely. Let's see here. Pressing the R button in the main fight menu allows you to instantly click the run button. <sighs> Bro, where were you five minutes ago? My Shinx is on your hands, buddy. I literally lost an entire encounter because you couldn't tell me this neat trick earlier. You're a sham. I hope you get lost in the Viridian Forest maze and the next shiny Pokemon you encounter. You uh, accidentally hit the runaway button. Jeez, ah, oh, that guy is freaking, uh, Well, at least we can move straight into Viridian Forest and get a new encounter. And look here, we've got Toad's Cool. A brand new Divergent form Pokemon from Gen 9. Excellent. I love the Gen 9 Pokemon. Let's scoop him up and call him Cool Running. Literally a couple steps after that encounter, this game throws another curveball and we actually have a battle with Brendan. He starts off with Callfish, which is a great bait and trick because I thought he would start with his Trico that was following him. But Ghost Pep should be able to hold out on his own here. I'm able to use Round to finish him off and then out comes Trico. Nothing to overthink here. Let's go for an Ember and finish him off quickly. That battle came out of absolutely nowhere and I have a feeling the next rematches with him are going to be a lot harder. Heading through the remainder of Viridian Forest, I don't have too many difficulties with my Fire Starter, with the exception of this trainer that has an Ordino that keeps spamming Heal Wish and Protect. It's a super lengthy fight, but luckily they don't have too many damaging moves, so we're able to stall it out. And she actually gives us Infinite Repel as a permanent feature we can switch on. That's amazing, this should always be in the game. Before facing Brock at our first Gym Leader Challenge, let's first head to the left of Viridian City to Route 22, where I'm able to get a new encounter, and I'm actually able to find an Alolan Sandshrew. This is amazing type coverage for Brock, so let's snatch this up quickly and call him Mushroom. We also have the Pewter City encounter, where we find a Starly, which we'll call Starfall. And lastly, we have Diglett's Cave, where we find a new Gen 9 Pokemon, Nackley. Let's catch him and add him to our team and name him Roblox, as his final evolution is this blocky abomination. <coughs> and just as we go to Brock's gym, he, he's out? Huh? He's not here? He must be out getting new drying pans from Kmart. Turns out we have to go first Faulkner, the first gym leader from Johto. And let me tell you, this fight is a beast. This fight caused countless resets from me whiting out from this team. It's the first real challenge of this game. Faulkner starts off with a Rufflet, who unfortunately has Rock Tomb, so my Ghost Pep is in a real disadvantage here. I'm gonna have to quickly get an attack in and then swap out to Mushroom to finish him off. Next up is Flittle, who is a new Gen 9 Psychic Pokemon, which is a massive curveball. I swap out to Goonti here to hopefully resist the Psychic attacks with his Dark Typing. Flittle continues to charge up its special attack and special defense by using Calm Mind to monstrous levels, but luckily Gunter has Snarl to reduce its special attack. Another curveball is thrown as it actually knows a fairy move, which is not good for my dark typing, so I'm gonna have to swap out Gunter here. I swap out to Starfall, who I'm hoping can tank out a couple special attacks, and oh my god, it gets me down to 5 HP before I'm able to luck land a wing attack to take it down. 
And for the last Pokemon, Falconer's got a real ace up his sleeve. He's got Watch Rule, an electric flying type Pokemon. This is going to perfectly counter any flying or electric Pokemon you try to send out. Roblox is my starting choice here and Watch Rule absolutely annihilates my HP within two turns. I'm only down to two HP already, but thankfully he's able to get a large chunk of its health before swapping out. But that is quickly negated by a held item and it quickly restores its HP. I have to swap out here. I try cool running, but this is a massive mistake and he almost gets one shot. So it's back to square one with Mushroom who can resist his flying type attacks. Mushroom has a priority type ice move, ice shard, so I give this a go and it's able to knock out the Watchroll. Whew. With that challenge out of the way, Brock is finally back in his gym from Kmart buying his drying pans. Upon entering the gym, we're hit with our favorite, yo, champ in the making guy who lists additional rules that have been added to Pokemon Radical Red. No accuracy reducing moves, no baton pass, sleep claws means only one Pokemon per team can be slept at any time, no one hit KO attack moves, no using bag items, there is a level cap that is equal to the gym leader's highest Pokemon and your Pokemon will disobey if you go above it, consumable held items come back after trainer fights, the battle style type is set, and you cannot feed items from other Pokemon. This is great because Radical Red actually introduces some of those hardcore Nuzlocke rules that we talked about earlier in the video, but these rules are always in effect, not only in gyms. So let's jump right into our first gym battle and see what the Brock is cooking. Brock starts out with an Alolan Geodude, which is electric rock typing. I use Round to get some initial damage, but he quickly swaps to Onyx, his signature Pokemon. I know just the man in the running Z for this job. So let's send out Cool Running to get that sweet four times grass super effective moves. Cool Running is able to withstand Onyx's brutal rock tomb onslaught and absorbs HP to recover the damage that was taken. Next up we have Archon who is a great counter for grass Pokemon, so it's time to swap out to Mushroom who could deal some chilling 4 times super effective priority with his Ice Shard move. But this isn't Brock's first rodeo, he pulls a fast one and sends out a Varum with an air balloon. Ghost Pep is the man for the job here seeing as Varum isn't a ground type, so he should be able to tank any ground moves. Ghost Pep gets him to low HP but Brock's pullout game is far too strong for me, a lousy no gym badge having ass, no nurse joy peasant. Well, I for one think that's a wonderful idea. He goes back to Geodude, forcing me again to swap to Gunter to stall, but Gunter is no Ooh. man for the job, so it's up to Roblox to shine. Again, a really bad choice, so we have to bring out Cool Running again. A lot better overall, as he can nullify any electric tax and resist ground moves. Cool Running secures the payload and Archon is back in the rumble. Time to swap back to Mushroom, who is thirsty for that knockout bait from earlier. Lastly, Varum is sent back out and I'm going to have to go with Starfall here to wind down the last minimal health it has. And that's the first gym badge secured and we only managed to claw through barely, but this gym doesn't even compare near to the behemoth of the upcoming Misty battle. Following the gym battle, we are able to get both Ghost Pep and Gunter to evolve with the level cap raised. Let's roll right into some new encounters and a Mount Moon. I wonder what we're going to get here. And of course, it's a Zubat, but that's okay. I can't be upset about that as Crobat is an excellent Pokemon. It's a speed demon. Welcome to the team, Sonic Chew. We also have the encounter for Route 4, so I'm actually going to go ahead and buy the Magikarp from this man that scams you in the Pokemon Center. Venturing through Mount Moon, we next have the fight with the Fossil Keeper. This is our first notable double battle, and he leads in with two Grass Pokemon. His Swainian Voltorb, who is Grass Electric, and Thwacky. Voltorb goes for a self-destruct, which is extremely scary, but luckily it doesn't do too much damage. Ghost Pep is able to bring his spice to the table and make quick work of the Thwacky. Next up, we have a Bibarel on Sableye. I'm going to swap out Gunter to Starfall here, as this is a very stall-heavy fight with how tanky the Bibarel is. Bibarel also lands a terrifying Aqua Jet on Starfall, who only just manages to hold out, thanks to the grass terrain that was activated earlier in the fight. Eventually, after numerous rounds, the two are able to be defeated. And in typical Radical Red fashion, we take two steps forward and immediately another challenger is already here to ruin our day. This time, it's Team Rocket Admin Archer from Gold and Silver, starting out with a Glimmit. Glimmit's whole gimmick is an ability centered around scattering poison spikes onto the field when hit with a physical attack, so I have to be careful not to hit this Pokemon with a physical move early in the fight. I swap out to Cool Run-In and he brings out a Mighty Inner. I throw out Starfall here to intimidate it and lower its attack and wind down its HP. Unfortunately, I have underestimated the strength of this dog, and he actually knows and uses Ice Fang, which absolutely plummets Starfall. Gunter is up next to finish off the Mighty Inner and avenge his fallen comrade. Next up, we have a Houndour. A headbutt that lands a flinch is a fantastic start, and that is enough to take down the Houndour. Finally, the only last remaining Pokemon is the Glimmit, and as it's the last one, I don't have to worry about the physical attacks as I won't be swapping off anymore. 
Gunter finishes the fight and Archer leaves us with some very thoughtful words. I won't be so nice next time. My brother in Christ, you sentenced Starfall to eternity in the PC dead box. Think about your actions and if Team Rocket is really doing the right thing. Following this fight, we have some more evolutions. Ooh. Roblox evolves alongside Sonic 2 actually evolving twice into Kobat, a speed demon. We arrive to Cerulean City and are able to grab a new encounter. I fish for anything I can find and luckily I get a Toodle. Let's capture him pronto and name him Five Gum. Stimulate your senses. Now it's finally time to fight Misty, and let me tell you, this is truly where boys become men in this game. Misty was such a wall to pass by, I mistook her for a rock type gym leader. I had to reset my run multiple times due to the power of her team, but after losing to her multiple times in previous runs, I did become familiar with what works best on her team. I lead off with Gunta starting with Night Slash. Misty is already excited to swap her Pokemon around and she sends out Clodsire, an absolute tank machine of a Pokemon introduced in Gen 9. This thing is like Whitney's Mill Tank on steroids. I know that I need to debuff this Pokemon pronto, so I go for a Parting Shot. Parting Shot is an excellent move that was introduced in Generation 9 that lowers the enemy's attack and special attack by one level and then returns the Pokemon back to be swapped. It's a fantastic move to set up early in fights and one that I use on countless occasions throughout this playthrough. With Clodsire's attack now lowered, I know that I need to deal some absolutely insane damage to take this blob down, so I send out Mushroom to use Ice Ball, a 5 turn attack which increases in damage each turn. Despite the tremendous power of this attack by the end of the 5th turn, locking in a 5 turn attack is almost destined to send Mushroom to its grave, but I just need it at least to take out Clodsire. Clodsire begins its clown routine of attacking heavy with bulldoze and lowering my speed and spamming recover to restore any HP. But Clodsire doesn't know that Mushroom is getting increasingly more powerful with every single move. Thankfully, Mushroom is able to take it down after numerous turns. Up next is the Frogadier that leaded. With my speed being lowered so much from the bulldoze spam, I know that Frogadier is going to go first, and it uses Grass Knot, which is an amazing strike of luck for my team, as its ability is Protein, which changes the entire typing of the Pokemon based off the move it used, and it just used a Grass move, therefore being weak to ice. Mushroom is an unstoppable freak of nature now. She hasn't skipped leg day once and is able to one-shot the Frogadier. Next up is Misty's Trump Pokemon, Starmie, a monster special attacker, but I'm locked into a five turn attack with Ice Ball, so the curtains are falling on Mushroom. But amazingly, we are given a rare breather in this brutal ROM hack. Starmie isn't able to take down Mushroom and she holds on with one HP due to resisting the ice move and being able to deliver an absolute spirit bomb of a final five turn attack ice ball, which immediately one shots the Starmie. We only now have Floatzel, the final Pokemon of Misty. So let's send out Gunter and get in with a Night Slash. Floatzel's attack does a ridiculous chunk of health, so I have no choice other than swapping to Sonic 2 to try to outspeed it. And Sonic 2 is able to land a critical hit across Poison and take down the final Pokemon in Misty's team, guaranteeing us the second Pokemon badge. It's such a relief to get past this fight after so many retries. It's unique fights like this, incorporating awesome new Pokemon from Gen 9 like Clodsire that make Radical Red such a fresh new fun experience. Next up, we are heading to Nugget Bridge. And seriously, am I having a stroke or is someone making an omelette? Oh, Eggnog, what a surprise. I didn't expect your totally unexpected encounter here. Eggnog has seriously upped his coverage and leaves with a Curlier. This is a great matchup for Sonic Chew, but he quickly swaps to a Bisharp to resist the poison move that I was going to use on Curlier's fairy typing. Time to send out Ghost Pep to melt these steel beams and Eggnog has been taking some notes from Brock. He is just pulling out faster than Brock's chances of ever getting a date with Nurse Joy and he sends out Wartortle. Gunter is back on the table and this guy does never know how to back down. Never what? Again, he runs to withdrawing Wartortle, so I have to send out Sonic Chew to secure the deal. Sonic Chew is able to take down Wartortle and next up we have Staravia. Rest in peace, Starvol, you'll not be forgotten. Mushroom is coming out next and hits the Staravia with priority ice shards. With Wartortle down, it's time to switch in Ghost Pep one last time to checkmate this Pawniard. Lastly, Curly is back and Gunter is sent in to finish what he started. A true dark type this one, but he isn't able to finish a job. Uh, I guess he takes more after his normal typing then, unlike his split dark type. But it's time to send in Sonic Chew to finish the job, which is dealt with swiftly. Huh? What's that, Eggnog? A slow little slob like me? Okay, Eggnog, at least my Raticate is still alive. Cool Running is next to evolve into Toadscrawl, one of my favourite Gen 9 and Divergent Pokemon ever made.
The trainers on Nugget Bridge aren't too difficult to take down, except of course for the final rocket grunt at the end of the bridge. He initially starts with a Growlithe, so I swapped to 5 Gum, a replacement for Starfall, may you rest in peace, to seal the deal. Toga Damaru is up next, so I swap to Cool Running to get a nasty 4 times ground stab attack in. Next up we have a Gabite, which is an extremely dangerous strong physical attack Pokemon, especially at this stage in the game. Gunter will have to use Parting Shot here and then swap to Mushroom who will deal 4 times Ice Stab damage priority. Lastly we have a Kamala, that is an absolute demon in disguise of its cute appearance. This Kamala knows last resort, even more power generating from it being a stab. I go for an Iron Defense and it is only enough to resist the power of this demonic drop bear. Nugget Bridge has been cleared and look 5 Gum is the next to evolve and we have a new encounter for this route. Let's duck into the grass here and we meet our next addition, Bolt the Yamper. We also find a Swablu in the next route so let's catch that and name it Jiggly Fluff. At the end of the route, after talking to Bill to get the SS and ticket, there is actually an optional Johto battle with Bugsy. I am pretty well equipped for taking down bug types with my team with a fire starter so let's give it a crack. The battle is strategically set in a raining environment, making it a lot more difficult for a fire Pokemon to get a victory sweep due to the environmental reduced fire damage. Bugsy starts with Low Kicks, a new Gen 9 Bug Dark Pokemon, and I lead with an Air Cutter. Before I can finish it off, Scizor is quickly swapped in, so now I'm going to have to bring out Ghost Pep, who can take it down exploiting its 4 times fire weakness. Next is Ledian, who has a surprisingly strong punch move set, so I send out Sonic Chew to deal some major flying type damage. Next up is Scyther, and Sonic Chew is able to continue carrying this fight. Lastly, Low Kicks returns with minimal health, so I send out Mushroom to get a priority super effective ice move. Time to head to the SSN and of course we have another decently challenging Team Rocket fight. At the back of the house they robbed. The battle isn't too bad starting with an Alolan Persian but the grunt ends with an unexpectedly strong Oinkalone, knowing stockpile. I use Sonic Chew to continue to wear down the Pokemon and eventually its HP gets low enough that an Octillery is substituted in. I quickly send out Cool Running to wear it down and it's back to Oinkalone and Cool Running takes home the gold for Jamaica. We have a new encounter for the route below Cerulean City and we run into an Alolan Vulpix. Wow, what a great Pokemon. This Pokemon and Alolan Sandshrew are some of my favourite Alolan regional variants. I'm really glad I was able to get them both in this run. Let's capture it and name her Powder. On the next route after the Underground Passway we get another new encounter and Metatite, fantastic. In my last Pokemon video we had an amazing Metacham called Kix. Let's name this one Calm and assign this one a more lax persona. Upon entering Vermilion City I encounter an NPC that is selling a rare unique egg. You can choose between it being a random Pokemon or a Gen 9 Pokemon, so I go for the Gen 9 Paladia egg and scurry off to the Underground Pass to see what it is and oh, oh no, not this Pokemon. I don't know why, but I really hate this Pokemon's design. It just seems so incomplete. I think my biggest gripe with it is that the evolution looks barely any different and is so devoid of the usual Pokemon charm. I really dislike Pokemon evolutions that add barely anything to its character. Let's name you Mistake and never take you out of the PC box ever again. You disgust me. What a waste of an awesome typing, grass and ghost. Ugh. To the right of Vermilion City, we have another encounter. So let's jump right into that and we find ourselves a drowsy. I'll take that, let's go ahead and grab him and call him Sleepy Joe. He is always struggling to stay awake in that Pokemon Stadium minigame, just like the big man in charge himself. <laughs> it's time to board the SSN and fun fact, earlier in this exact month of August 2023, there was actually an in real life Pokemon cruise for a competitive Pokemon TCG players. They made the SSN into the real thing, neat. Let's clear out all of the trainers on board here and now we have another rival battle with Eggnog. Hey. Eggnog, or should I call you Milk Punch? <laughs> I'm no longer a slow little slob with quips like these. <laughs> milk slob. Oh, oh, it's you, Brendan. I ah, forget about what I said. Hey, haha, -ha, long time no see. Let's get this over with. He leads with the classic Gen 3 Pokemon, Loudred, and Sonic Chew begins to deliver the pain. Up next is Lunatone, and so I'm sending in Cool Running to deal some major grass damage. Groovile is quickly sent in, so I send out Ghost Pep in pursuit. Brendan sends out another Pokemon, Crawdon. Now this is a really bad position. Crawdaddy over here is able to sweep a lot of my Pokemon with its water and dark typing. I'm going to have to really consider every possibility here. I'm going to need to go back to the basics and consider all outcomes.
Sorry, Calm, you're being sacrificed. You lived an incredibly short and painful life, but you saved another Pokemon's life. Yay! Sonic 2 is then able to get a large chunk of his HP down, so I send out Cool Running to finish the Crawdaddy. Cool Running is then able to take down the Lunatone and secure the victory. Now we move on to what might be the single-handed most overlooked and creepy aspect of any Pokemon game. We have all seen creepy Pokemon Dex entry videos and the surprisingly deep lore of Ghost Pokemon and Lavender Town throughout the Pokemon games, but this next scene is something else. In this captain's room, the captain is feeling unwell and asks an unoccupied 11 year old boy to rub his shoulders and then feels immediately better and rewards you with a invaluable otherwise unobtainable key item. Rub 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 rub. That's four rubs too many. Yeah, are we even sure this guy is a captain at all? Someone needs to look into that and his behavior around children. FBI, open up. This is a random boat search. Before we take on our next electric gym leader, let's grab a couple more encounters by heading towards Dark Cave. Bolt levels up enough to evolve into a Bolt Hound, and the next encounter we get is Sheldon, the Shelmet. The journey to Dark Cave is proving fruitful until... Picnic of Caitlin. I should have known by her opening dialogue, don't you dare patronize me, that she is an absolute force to be reckoned with. She starts off innocently with a smeargle that knows Dragon Ascent. That is a move exclusively known by only Mega Rayquaza. This is no ordinary picnicker. Next up, we have a Hussainian Sneasel with another hefty moveset. This one uses close combat, which is a huge risk for a lot of my team weak to fighting moves. Sonic 2 is able to lower its HP down, but next, the true boss of this fight is subbed in. This Spinder knows the move V-Create alongside Dragon Ascent and Close Combat. V-Create is Victini's exclusive move that does 180 base fire damage. But here is the kicker. This Spinder has the ability which reverses stat changes in the opposite direction. So after using V-Create, a normal Victini Pokemon would have its defense, special defense, and speed lowered. But this Spinder has all these stats boosted up after using a base 180 fire damage attack. And of course, this also applies for the close combat and Dragon Ascent. This team completely wiped me in an earlier failed attempt. So I knew I had to take out this Spinder as quickly as possible to have a chance of succeeding this time. Jesus, I'm getting more cornered here than a female content creator on an alpha podcast. What's your body count? Um, maybe like 100, 200. That's disgusting. I use Sonic Chew with the hopes of landing a poison and he serves me well. The Spinder continues to power up with every move and I have to cycle in almost all of my team just to wither down its HP with all the buffs it is applying. Seriously, this thing had almost every single stat boosted to the max. It is an absolute fluff monster. Eventually, Sonic Chew and Ghost Pepper able to wind it down to its last HP. Luckily, as any other of my Pokemon would have been one-shot by its ridiculous V-Create and close combat moveset. Next up, we have a Lipid, and I send out Gunter to deal some damage as it can resist its attacks. Gunter is then also able to stay in and finish off the Sneasel, and wow, what an encounter. If I hadn't known about this fight in a previous run, I would have been absolutely slaughtered by the bizarre V-Create move added to a Spinder. If you ever attempt to Nuzlocke this title and haven't completed it before, I highly recommend looking up the community walkthrough guide to be aware of seemingly random godlike trainers that appear in innocent routes like this one. For our next two encounters, we run into a Helioptile, which I name Helicoptile, Helicoptile, and a Carcol, which I name Coal Mine, a terrible pun on the name Carmine, which is also a good name. I'm also able to level up Coal Mine to its final evolution, as it's the same as the current gym level cap. At this point, we are certainly equipped to take on the third gym. Let's take down the gym trainers and brace ourselves for Lieutenant Surge. This is the man that canonically served and confirmed that there was a Pokemon war, so this is going to be one hell of a fight. Starting the battle, we have a Pinch Urchin, and Cool Running is sent out. Pinch Urchin immediately sets on Electric Field with its ability, which is a massive boost for Lieutenant Surge. Lieutenant Surge is lightning quick to swap out Belly Bolt, a new electric Pokemon from Gen 9. This Pokemon is another bulky monster, so Cool Running gradually drains down its HP over a large amount of turns. Just before the final shot, Lieutenant Surge sends out his signature Raichu, but it is now an Alolan Electric Psychic Raichu. This Pokemon is a special attack monster, so I quickly need to finish it off with Cool Running, as they are the best ground type Pokemon I have at the moment, and the grass type helps resist electricity. Coming up next though, we have a massive challenge. Lieutenant Surge has a Minectric that can mega evolve. I send in Coal Mine to stall out as much damage as possible, 
cool running is too low on HP to take down a mega Pokemon, so I have to go with a brand new strategy here. I use Colossal's signature move, Tar Shot. This is a non-damaging move that will make Pokemon struck super weak to fire type moves, meaning fire type moves will be super effective. This allows Coalmine to dish out significantly more damage, double, and is able to take down the Mega Evolve Pokemon in one single shot. Next up we have Pormont, another extremely formidable electric fighting Pokemon. This one is an extremely dangerous sweeper. I swap out to Ghost Pep to stall as long as possible as my team is currently extremely weak to fighting Pokemon, and I can't even think to use Sonic True in Electric Gym without it being a guaranteed kill. Ghost Pep understands the assignment and lowers the HP enough so that Sonic True can guarantee sweep it with its quick speed stat. The starting Pinch Urchin is up next. I swap to Cool Running to dish out some serious ground damage. Cool Running is going for a second mud shot and is so close to knocking out the enemy, but unfortunately, this is the departing sled race for this cool cucumber. Well done, Cool Running. You brought home the gold for us. Finally, I use Gunter to finish off the Pin Urchin and the final remaining HP on the Belly Bolt. That was a traumatic experience. We lost some great men on the field today. And what a journey it has already been so far. This marks the end of my first Pokemon video in the Nuzlocke series for Radical Red. This video has taken me so much longer than I expected due to the fine-tuned trainer AI and difficulty enhancements in the game, but doing a run-through of it has made it that much more satisfying to push through. Gen 9 Pokemon have some of the most unique and creative Pokemon designs in the entire series, so I'm glad to see games like Radical Red offer players an opportunity to see the new Pokemon designs, especially if they missed out on playing the new Scarlet and Violet mainline games. I for one always enjoy Pokemon the most in the earlier Gen 3 engine with pixel art. Whenever new mainline Pokemon games come out, I'm always super excited to see the Pokemon backported into Gen 3 games like Fire Red and Emerald. I'm continuing to work more in the series and the Nuzlocke run as this video is published, so if you'd like to see more, please like and comment on the video. It really helps out the channel a lot. As always, have a great one and I'll catch you in the next one.